President Barack Obama and other leaders from around the world have gathered in Washington for the fourth nuclear summit. The Chinese head of state Xi Jinping is among 50 leaders at that event. The leaders aim to agree on reduced risks of such nuclear warfare and also to promote the use of nuclear power for peaceful means, especially energy generation. Mr. Obama launched the summit nearly six years ago and he's made making the world free of nuclear weapons a theme in his presidency. Plenty of uh, things to talk about in this particular topic. Let's expand the conversation. And really, Daniel Rangers is live in Washington, D.C., covering that event for us. Angelo Coppola, of course, joins us as well from Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, Angelo, let's put this into context. Outside uh, South Africa, which has a 1,800 megawatt uh, power plant and plans to add about 10 more, uh, which other countries other than Nigeria, Kenya and Egypt have nuclear power generation capacity or planning to acquire it? Well, Raman, the list is relatively short. An International Atomic Energy Agency mission is scheduled for early 2017. And it's going to be assessing Ghana's nuclear infrastructure ahead of a government decision that's planned for 2018 on whether they're going to go for nuclear power or not. The agency is also providing technical support to Algerian experts who are conducting an energy planning study at the moment to look at sustainable energy development in their country, and they're looking at nuclear power. And then, of course, there's Morocco, and they're considering nuclear power as a long-term energy source. Indeed. They um, hosted an IAEA mission in October 2015. Uh, indeed. Um, Daniel, when we talk about power, especially across Africa, one of the things that comes to mind is a Power Africa program. So where does nuclear power fit into that? Well, Power Africa is sort of the umbrella around which President Obama has spearheaded the multi uh, agency approach of the US government to try to assist uh, Africans in expanding their access to electricity. So under Power Africa they've basically stated that coal and nuclear are out of the picture and that they prefer things like solar, uh, wind and even uh, if you're talking about traditional fuels and natural gas because it burns better. I've been trying to nail down with these various US government agencies exactly why they don't preference uh, nuclear technology. It's pretty clear with coal that there's an issue with the environmental credentials. But with nuclear technology, they haven't eloquate, uh, they haven't provided a, a response as yet. But I suspect it has to do with the various risk factors that are in place, a more complex uh, number of risk factors when considering nuclear fuel and basically they've ruled it out altogether in favor of things like solar and also these sort of micro smart grids that provide power to smaller communities and to provide the sort of infrastructure that they need in order to achieve that. Indeed, we'll get back to that risk appetite question a little later. Um, Angelo, nuclear power is something we've talked about quite a bit, especially in the context of South Africa with a 9.6 gigawatt of extra capacity planned. Um, last year, we had an enormous range of cost estimates, you know, from $37 billion to as much as $100 billion to acquire that capacity. Do we have any clarity now on exactly how much it will cost? No, afraid not. Those numbers are still unclear. In fact, analysts are suggesting that government will have to put down around $53 billion U.S. dollars to guarantee, or as a guarantee to get the nuclear ball rolling here. Some estimates put that figure north of $65 billion. The unknown quantity here is the construction and thus the cost overruns that might happen. South Africa's history in constructing those two new power plants that we've got at Madupi and Kusili point to the danger of budgeting and cost overruns. And when you consider that much of the heavy labor that will be used will be local, it implies union involvement which carries its own risks and its own associated costs. So it remains a moving target, and this is probably what's worrying the Finance Minister, Pravin Gordon, at the moment. Rama? Indeed. On, on balance, perhaps it might actually just make sense to build another set of Madupi and Kusile. Um, Daniel, what are the concerns being raised in Washington, especially about the, the security aspect of building nuclear power plants? And as we've just heard, there are quite a few of them being planned right across Africa. Well, I think Angelo very eloquently explained some of the capital issues with uh, establishing those plants. But I think nuclear security experts I've spoken to here in Washington have suggested that the maintenance is the main security threat. Um, so, for ex so, for example, in order to establish long-term stability with a nuclear plant, you need to have a stable political environment. You need not to have uh, potential security threats like Boko Haram or Al-Qaeda 
uh, that uh, have stated that they're interested in acquiring dirty bombs and the like. You need to have a very educated workforce that is, uh, is going to maintain the security of those sites. You need to have a very good line of leadership. And also, you need to have a very stable geological situation. As you know, Japan's a very stable country, but it had problems because of the geol geology there. So there are many risk factors. And if any of those risk factors are present, then I think US government and US private entities are going to look at, take a long look at them and say, actually, there aren't that many countries in Africa that tick all those boxes. Indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Daniel Rangers live in Washington and, of course, Angelo Coppola in South Africa.